Am I okay here? So what is the significance of what we're doing here? It's a reference. Okay, we're preparing a reference. I'm going to collect the data so it can be scanned. There's really a lot of energy coming together to try and save it, to restore it. So there's a whole group of scientists who are interested, and I think from there, we're going to manage to do something. So uh, it's scanning like that, it's sweeping, it takes a point every five millimeters. It sweeps vertically, and then we'll do the same thing in the other two positions to get the whole of the cabin in 3D. We're really doing an exhaustive survey, you see. And that allows us to, as well, there are things which are on the same level. I can know if some zones are damper than others, what the color of the paint was. So it's the same operation that we'll do in the ice moulins. It's going to be fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, we'll have to find a solution because this stops the whole expedition. It does this all the time. Okay, we'll go and see Serge. We can't get it started. Ah, now that's a big problem. While Serge, as head of the expedition, has to put up with the nightmare logistics, the scientists have gone to the Equisermia Glacier, where Luke set up over a year ago a time-lapse camera. Incredible. It's lost all that volume. I've never known it so reduced. Well, uh, let's hope we've got the photos. It's been here a year. Three photos a day. You see it's on the right frequency and it's still going. Okay then. Let's open it up. You can really see the general flow of the glacier. On the left bank, it's a lot slower, but when you get to a third, there you are, the glacier really accelerates. At the center of the point, it's a little more, and at two thirds, it accelerates as well. What happened? The stove caught fire when I lit it, and so I took it outside and burned my fingers. Okay. How did you do that? Well, when I got out the stove... The thing hadn't been properly tightened again. There was a small leak and... Oh, blast it. That's the kind of thing that mustn't happen. When I lit the thing... Every time I tell you, watch out when you tighten that thing. Yeah, that must hurt, huh? It burns. Yeah, it hurts. I'm not surprised. When you descend the moulins, you're careful about everything. Well, we're not down there. It's often little things like that. In terms of the expedition, Serge, should I be worried? If it gets colder, about my fingers? Well, I'm no doctor, but it seems to me, yes, that has to make your hand more fragile. We call this accident-prone moulin, because I think that goes well with what's happening to us. Joel's dream to descend a big moulin is now sadly impossible. As for the generator, Alessio Romeo should be joining the team with a portable electric generator. Either Alessio is there, and that's great, or Alessio is not there, and that complicates things for the next part of our expedition. Bringing up a generator to the camp is heavy work, but the main thing is then it's here. That's a relief for the expedition. <laughs> oh, yeah. There we are. It works! Perfect. We can stop. Let it run a little. Go on, put up the pressure. There we are. Perfect. 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 
I'm going to cut up some ham. I'm making an individual packet for each walker. It's important to eat well, to feed yourself properly. It keeps the troops' spirits up. It's the atmosphere as well which makes the expedition good or not. Well, then there's the chance factor, the generator breaking down, the stove catching fire. At the worst, you set the place on fire, and that's bad for morale. But as well as that, it adds a bit of spice to life. All these flies, it's starting to get a bit painful too. There's a whole lot in the tent, yeah. Luckily, we'll be away from the moss soon and back on the ice. Moulins, I think we'll find some. Well, they might not be up to what we expect, but we'll have a good look around anyway. Ah, oh, we'll find Moulins, that's for sure. Right, I'll take the rope. Good. Hervé, Lionel, we're going looking for Moulins. Well, I'm a bit skeptical that we're going to find big Moulins close to the Moraine. If we think about other years, we were further along the coast. All the same. A bit of information already, some GPS data. OK, I've got that. I think we're in the zone, between 8 and 12 kilometers to go. Now, nothing's stopping us once we've set up camp from spreading out in different directions and, well, if we can get away from the flies, that'll be a really good thing, no? After three hours' trek, the team has reached the moraine, the last barrier before the immensity of the ice cap, the ice sheet. All that remains is to find some great moulin. Joel, it's Serge. Can you hear me? Serge for Joel. Reading you loud and clear, Serge. Listen, this is great. We've just found a really nice moulin. And I think we can take all the team in, all the science team. So, a new expedition starts for us, after the Port Victor one. We'll run into snow, ice, maybe storms, who knows? And why not set a new world record? Serge, you must be hungry after that walk. Yes, a little bit, because it was quite long after all. We went a long way, and we were getting disencouraged there because we weren't seeing any moulins. No moulins, no big moulins, no little moulins, nothing, you see. It was really covered in snow, impossible. We backtracked a little bit and made a half circle, when all at once, the Holy Grail. That's really what it was. We came across a big moulin, really a big moulin, a bit more than 10 meters round. Magnificent. It isn't all that far from the moraine, that's to say, more or less. We walked a fair bit, but I'd say 20, 25 minutes from the edge of the moraine. And as well, luck was with us and we found a campsite. Really nice place, relatively flat. And it's snowy there? It's very snowy. And I left Hervé and Leo there. You see, we're happy, because it's what we were looking for. A nice hole. I hope it's a deep one. 